Hey everybody, welcome to the ninth episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at the arpeggiator effect, which is going to allow us to animate our effects on the Launchpad. The arpeggiator effect loops across multiple MIDI notes that are currently turned on. If I press just one button, it's just going to keep looping over that one single button. If I press two buttons, it starts to loop across those two buttons. If I press three buttons, it is going to loop across the three buttons in their order. In order to constantly feed the arpeggiator a set sequence of notes, we are going to be using a chord with pitches one, two, and three, which will always create a row of lights. So now when we use our arpeggiator, it loops across the chord we've created. Now let's go over some of the parameters of the arpeggiator. First, there's the rate and the gate knobs. The rate defines the speed at which the arpeggiator will loop over our notes. So if we turn it down to make it faster, it's going to go across our row very, very quickly. The rate value will always be synced up to your BPM. The gate knob defines how long each note is going to be on screen. So if I turn this up to 200%, two notes will be on screen at the same time. If we make this 100%, only one note will be on screen at a time. However, you shouldn't use the gate knob because when you are recording a live performance, having a gate above 200% is going to make notes randomly jump around for no real reason. Setting it back to 50% restores their normal timings. If you want a note to stay on for longer, you can just chain a note length after it. The arpeggiator doesn't necessarily have to always go upwards. You can use the down style instead to make it go downwards, or you can use the random styles to make them flash in a random order. For a full list of what all of the styles behave like, please check Ableton's live MIDI effect reference. I'll be linking to it in the description. The repeat knob defines how many times the arpeggiator will loop over said notes. Setting this to infinite means it'll loop as long as we are pushing the button. Setting this to something like 1 means that it'll only loop across the notes once, no matter how long we hold the button for. Setting it to 4 is only gonna make it loop 4 times. Additionally, you can enable hold, which makes the arpeggiator automatically hold the note for you, so you do not have to hold it the entire time. Just be careful when using infinite repeats with this, however, because this will make the effect never-ending. Generally, most of the time, you will be using one repeat. Additionally, you can use the offset knob to offset where your looping effect will start. If you want it to start at the second note instead of the first note, and still keep going upwards, you can offset this by one, and now it'll start at the second note instead and look back over to the ones it missed. You can also go into the negatives to start at a previous note. If your pattern is simple and linear, instead of using a chord, you can use the built-in steps and distance function. If you have to go three steps forward at a distance of one note, it is the same as using the chord we were previously using. You can use a distance of four to go upwards on the grid. Note that this cannot be used to go across the middle, because it will just loop upwards. In that case, we must tack two chords like this. Finally, we can add some color to our effect, for example, a nice green color. And then we can map it onto a single button, so we can start creating another effect on a different button. On this here button, I'm going to create a vertical arpeggiator effect. So I'll drag an arpeggiator, make it 7 steps plus 4, rate, repeats, and make sure it holds. These kinds of settings are what you're mostly going to be using for your arpeggiator-based effects. Add a note length and a color. Note that arpeggiators usually should not span across multiple notes like other effects do, because instead of creating two columns as you would normally expect, pressing them quickly will cause the two big note chords to collide together so the arpeggiator sees this entire block here and goes up in this fashion. So for arpeggiator-based effects, you are better off duplicating them and shifting them to the right. You can also stack multiple different arpeggiators onto the same note to create even more complex effects. Let's say I want to make an outwards effect starting at this here button. I will configure my arpeggiator and make sure it goes three steps to the right. Now I will group this one and start configuring the rest. I will duplicate the one I had previously and now instead I'm going to make it go upwards three steps. I'm going to duplicate that one as well, and I'm going to make it go downwards four steps. But this time I need four steps, because there are four buttons down here. And additionally, for the left side, I need to use a chord because I have to cross the middle. Now, I want this to go downwards instead of upwards, so I will use the down style instead of the up style. Now I have an upwards effect. I can give it a common velocity and also a common note length. 
And just like that, I've created a simple outwards going effect. Let's look at how to create a generic inwards effect that starts from the outer ends of the launch pad going into the inner ends, no matter where we press the button. We'll start by dragging an arpeggiator onto this here button. We want movement to start on this button, but we are on this button. So first, we will pitch it down to this button right here. And now we can use the steps to move diagonally. At plus 5, you move diagonally towards the top right. At plus 3, you move diagonally towards the top left. At minus 5, you move diagonally towards the bottom left. And at minus 3, you move diagonally towards the bottom right. This is the first section of our inwards effect. Now we have to group both the pitch and the arpeggiator because the other arpeggiators are going to use a different pitch. So now I wanted to start at this note instead. The pitch for that is 25. And I have to make sure that I want to go towards the bottom right. Minus 3. I can create the other two sides very similarly. Add a common velocity and a common nut length. It is also important to note that you should not stack multiple arpeggiators right after each other in a chain. Consider this example. You want to create an effect that starts going down, and after a while starts going down here, after a while starts going down here, and then finally finishes here. The naive solution would be to make one effect that goes here to the right, and then each of those is going to trigger an arpeggiator that goes down. Let's see how we could build this. First, we create the arpeggiator that goes towards the right. Okay, this is the first part of our light effect. Now, to each of these notes, we must map another arpeggiator. Now we will use the key zones here to map to each of these light effects. So let's add an arpeggiator and make sure it is located at E3, which should be the starting point for our light effect. Now we configure this arpeggiator to move downwards at the same rate. Now we can just duplicate this one across the rest. Otherwise, we would get a similar situation to our red arpeggiators from earlier. And this can actually work. You have a pretty complex inwards going effect that spans across the entire quadrant of the launch pad. You can also add a note length at the end, as well as give it a starting velocity. The reason why this is bad practice is similar to the gate being 200%. If you're recording, the lights will miss their timing. You can see it sometimes happens with these two columns, sometimes with these two columns, and sometimes with these two columns. It is going to make your light effects look noticeably inaccurate, even though you've done everything right. In order to get around this problem, you should remove the first arpeggiator, and instead of it, you should simulate a delay with the note length note off features. First, we add a chord here to trigger all three arpeggiators at once. Then for the second one, we're gonna make sure the note only stays on for one amount of our rate. And then we're gonna make it trigger the arpeggiator when it turns off. Doesn't matter for how long. So now the second one should be delayed by exactly one of our rate. We can repeat this process, but this time we want to make sure it's twice the amount of time. You can either set the gate to 200% or you can up the length. And finally, for the fourth one, we want to make sure it's three times our rate. And for this, we're going to double our length and then set our gate to 150%. And that will give you the same effect going smoothly, even if you are recording. That's it for this week's tutorial. I hope this tutorial helped you learn a lot about how arpeggiators work and hopefully get rid of some common misconceptions about them. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments and I will answer right away. Thank you for watching. Bye.